Welcome to Inside Azure for IT. I'm Erin Chappell, and every show will welcome industry and cloud experts to give you an inside look at tech topics that can help you in your day-to-day -day roles as IT professionals. In today's episode, I'm joined by leaders from SAP and VMware. Now, before I introduce our first guest, I wanted to say thank you. You all have been called on to help the world's critical technology needs during this pandemic. You stood up resources to meet no demand, you pivoted your businesses, all amidst what was a personally challenging time for each of us. Now for me, it's been truly inspiring to see IT and developers come together to address unprecedented challenges and deliver amazing solutions that support remote work, optimize costs, maintain business continuity, and even transform industries. In my conversations with customers, which I've also seen validated by analysts, companies have significantly increased their plans to shift to the cloud. And because of this, I wanted to invite a few guests who represent some of the most common systems and applications that are migrating to the cloud. We know SAP is predominant in many enterprises. It gives me great pleasure to kick off our episode with someone who's no stranger to this audience, Julia White. She's joining me from her new role as SAP's Chief Marketing and Solutions Officer and board member. Julie, it's so great to see you here and have you here. Honestly, when we were discussing the guests for this first show, I couldn't imagine you not being part of it. Well, it is also great for me to be here and to be your first guest, so thank you for that. SAP and Microsoft have had a long partnership, and Microsoft uses SAP to run some of our most important workloads, supply chain, payroll, and taxes. We're one of the largest SAP deployments in the world. Absolutely, and of course, it's not just Microsoft. We have customers around the world running their most mission-critical business systems on SAP. If I reflect on the journey Microsoft has been on, we first did the classic lift and shift of SAP to Azure in 2017 and saw an immediate cost savings. And from there, our IT team saw opportunities to take full advantage of cloud elasticity, and we've been optimizing SAP to auto-scale when needed. So Julia, can you tell us a little bit about how customers from across industries have put their confidence in both SAP and Azure to enable them to transform the way that they do business? Yeah, absolutely, and it's really exciting to see the capabilities that the combination of SAP on Azure has allowed our customers to do across, gosh, almost every industry that I work in now. And, you know, for example, with retailers, right, be able to modernize their in-store experience as well as most recently pivot quickly to an e-commerce system as well as was necessary through COVID. And so the capabilities, of course, SAP has for HANA, but the scale and manageability of Azure gives them that flexibility. Mm -hmm. In manufacturing, right, being able to gain insights from factory floors, the consumer packaged good companies tapping into consumer behaviors to adjust the products they're building. Again, the combination of the SAP systems and the scale and capability of Azure really allows those kinds of experiences. And then, of course, the partnership across our companies to provide the right guidance, the right technical documentation, and then, you know, wrap that in specific industry guidance as well. And I know there are two brands that many of us know, Walgreens, which is my go-to pharmacy, and my favorite yogurt brand, Shabani. And both have evolved their business with SAP and Azure. Could you share a little bit more about their story? Yeah, absolutely. So Walgreens is a great one. They first started by migrating a huge amount, I think it's 100 terabytes of their SAP system into Azure. And it apparently just took 20 hours uh, with their SAP S4 HANA system. And then because they were on S4 HANA and Azure, they were able to get you know, new experiences, right? Visibility into store inventory, and then be able to quickly adjust and get like, the right inventory to the right stores wherever they needed it. And then also, you know, powering Walgreens global supply chain. You know, our partnership across the two companies allowed them to scale out that infrastructure quickly and be able to run very successfully this big S4 HANA system on Azure. And now because they have their data with Azure as well, Walgreens can pull all of of that together and analyze it right across the mission critical data sitting in that SAP system with other systems that they're also working on and things like that help with increasing you know making sure that the, the pickup system is ready right when their customers need it and respond to the changing customer needs as well. You know, I, I love how our two companies and Walgreens formed a team to make that migration happen. And with Jobani, who started out as a yogurt brand, they've now grown so many product lines that they needed to overhaul their IT infrastructure to match just the pace of the company's growth. You know, how did they use S4 in Azure? 
Yeah, so uh, Chibani implemented their SAP S4 HANA on Azure to get more of the kind of real-time insight into their inventory, production levels, really tapping into their supply chain systems, right? And they did that with like literally near zero downtime as they were doing it. And as they've been running it, you know, beating their recovery time, their recovery point objectives as well. And it enables the company from, fundamentally from a business perspective to iterate on new food ideas, bring new products to market without having to worry about, you know, IT and infrastructure roadblocks. It allows them to frankly just be more customer centric and not worry about the scale of their system. Wow, those are both great examples of the value that SAP and Microsoft partnership really brings to customers. So you mentioned the scale of some of these deployments. What would you say to other customers who are considering moving SAP to Azure? What are, what are the reasons to move to the cloud? Yeah, I'd say, you know, we've seen a lot of customers just particularly during COVID really lift and shift uh, to the cloud. But of course, they really need to take advantage of adapting their business processes mm -hmm. as they do that. So taking advantage of what Azure is great for in scale and performance, but kind of really also looking at taking this moment to revisit and digitize and modernize those business processes with the SAP S4 system as well. And that's where you get the joint value across those. And then we've also seen, of course, customers add, you know, low code, no code, uh, quick business workflow applications as well, which is also a great way to do it. Then again, coming back and really thinking about when it's time now, as we're pivoting and coming more out of the survive mode into thrive mode, mm -hmm. looking at how do I change those core business processes? And obviously we have our you know, Rise with SAP offering that works with Azure, of course, as a way for customers to do that business process insights, really understand what business processes are optimized, which ones aren't and then adjust them as they're on their cloud evolution. I completely agree and, and both of our companies have partnered together to make these goals easier to achieve. You know the SAP and the Azure engineering teams were together in the same room to develop guidance and streamline migration to speed time to business value with reference architectures as well as industry specific journeys. So Julia shifting gears a bit to talk people. Right. We often talk about the, the journey to the cloud as a culture transformation, and we've seen that technology can really facilitate change in, in how we work. And so often we see people embracing different processes that speed agility, which can even result in an external transformation of the business. And so how would you describe the cultural shifts that happen when organizations digitally transform? Yeah, and honestly, in my experience, I'd say culture is one of the most important parts of getting the most and enabling digital transformation. And it takes, you know, a mindset shift as well as resilience. And uh, I'd say first, you know, it certainly starts with a growth mindset, something that's well known across both of our companies, to help, you know, the businesses and the people scale and think differently and bring new ideas to bear. And then really has to be about agility. And I think the, ol the older way of thinking of like, hey, this is a big system, it can't change for years versus, no, actually, it's always on, it's always adjusting. You can constantly be evaluating and kind of bringing new innovation to bear and adjusting. So that agility mindset and the culture to support that. And then because of that, you also have to be okay with some failure, mm -hmm. right? And I love, I'll actually quote Satya of the, you know, the path to uh, excellence requires failure of the, you know, uh, that idea. And because you're going to be iterating, those failures aren't, you know, huge. They can be small and we can learning and we can keep going. And then of course, it's about giving people the right skills, right? This is new, it is different, and we need them to have the skills and the confidence around working in a new approach. Yeah, you know, we know customers who are tuning in, you know, wanna be more agile. They wanna be able to respond to changes like we saw in this past year. So whether or not it be bringing critical data and tools from line of businesses in or supplier details faster to change decision making. You know, fundamentally, we want our IT professionals to feel like they're moving. Right, moving from implementers to operators to innovators and having that impact on the business. So thanks, Julie. It's, it's amazing to see what the deep partnership has done in just the last year, and I'm excited for what's ahead. Oh, thank you for having me. It's been fun to come back home and, of course, highlight some of the great partnership work across our two companies. SAP on Azure is clearly a great partnership, and I loved getting the chance to chat with Julia again. Now we know that while you want a fast path to the cloud, you may also want to modernize your on-premises workloads at your own pace. You need a solution that's engineered to meet you where you are. For those of you with on-premises VMware workloads, you're likely thinking, how can I extend my VMware workloads to the cloud? I'm gonna bring on our second guest who is joining us from his home office, Mark Lohmeyer, the SVP and GM of VMware's Cloud Services Business Unit. Hi Mark, it's such a pleasure to have you on the show today. Thanks, Aaron. It's great to be here. Now, you know, what some people watching may not even realize is that Microsoft and VMware have been partners for a long time, right? Supporting many of the same customers. And it's been more than a year since VMware and Microsoft brought 
Azure VMware solution to Azure, or AVS for shorthand. And so, Mark, can you share a little bit, what's the response been like to AVS? Sure, you know, the response has been just uh, fantastic. We have, uh, as you know, hundreds of thousands of customers running tens of millions of uh, VMs on VMware environments on-prem. And a significant portion of those are running Microsoft workloads. And with AVS, we're really together delivering the full set of VMware capabilities in Azure that makes it easy for our joint customers to move their on-prem VMware state to Azure with minimal friction. And as a result, we have a ton of customers across almost every industry vertical um, taking advantage of the service from Bass Pro Shops and retail to Avianca, which is a Latin America-based uh, airline. They're discovering how AVS can really help them rapidly migrate and modernize their applications in Azure. And we're really just getting started. Hey, Mark, I too have heard a lot from customers who are really pleased about some of the work we've done to simplify network integration across customers' existing data centers in Azure. And this really makes moving to the cloud from on-premises so much easier. Uh, you know, part of the partnership that I, I love the best is that we get the best of both worlds, right? AVS is an Azure native service. It's integrated into the Azure console. So it's all the tools that you know and love from VMware, but it's also architected as a, as a native Azure service. Could you talk a little bit more about some of the other investments we're making to simplify that journey to Azure? You know, sure, Aaron. So, you know, one of the first things we did is we wanted to make sure that we had really great um, integration with VMware Hybrid Cloud Extension, or HCX. And this is a VMware uh, service that makes large-scale cloud migrations easy for new customers into Azure. So for example, with HCX Enterprise, which includes a capability called Replication Assisted vMotion, we can enable customers to live migrate with no downtime, hundreds or even thousands of workloads and applications in a controlled fashion in a way that significantly reduces their time, uh, their cost, and the risk and complexity of our joint customers cloud migration initiatives. And of course, once those workloads are running in AVS, we can help lower their costs through consolidation benefits of vSphere, for example, while also providing the enterprise class availability, performance, and security you know, that they trust uh, from VMware and, and Azure together. Very, very true. And, you know, I now I know HCX does a great job at helping customers implement cloud migration, but, you know, we're also seeing a lot um, from customers about AVS and, and disaster recovery or DR. And so how are we making the, the DR easier for customers with AVS? You know, absolutely. So we've enabled uh, VMware Site Recovery Manager, or SRM, which is an existing proven VMware solution to provide automated DR into the AVS environment. So for example, if you're running uh, VMware-based VMs in your on-prem data center, you can now use AVS as a disaster recovery site and perform automated failover if there is a disaster. You know, but that's really just one example. At, at a broader level, what we're doing is we're enabling the full VMware set of solutions and capabilities in AVS. You know, so as another example, we've enabled our full set of management capabilities in the form of vRealize in AVS. And we've done this in such a way that it's completely compatible with what customers have in their own on-prem environments, enabling a consistent operational model you know, across, across these, uh, these environments. I think, Mark, that's such an important point to point out. It, you know, it all adds up to making life easier for, for the customer. You know, they can quickly migrate their on-premises environment without the application changes to AVS, and then keep using the same enterprise class compatible VMware capabilities and skills, as well as the tools and processes that they've relied on for years. I'd like to turn to our last topic, the future, right? You know, what innovation is ahead is a topic customers are always excited to hear about. And so, Mark, as the insider, can you give us a sneak peek at, at what's coming next? Sure, you know, so the, the, the engineering teams at Microsoft and VMware, we're really focused together on how do we make our joint services even more reliable? How do we make them scale better? And at the end of the day, how do we make it super simple for our customers to take advantage of all the additional services that Azure and VMware have to offer together? You know, every customer I talk to is interested in better reliability, better scalability. To really make it real, can you share some concrete examples of what customers, you know, can expect? So as one example, we're focused on enabling direct integration from VMware to Azure to take advantage of uh, some of the storage services in Azure. So for example, native Azure storage services, as well as Azure NetApp files. And uh, within this, we just announced the ability for AVS workloads to access high-performance storage with Azure Disk Storage. This allows our joint customers to scale their storage environment on demand and independently of the compute resources. 
So this involves our joint customers to really optimize the overall cost of running a mixed portfolio of workloads uh, in AVS. And beyond this, there's uh, more uh, regions that we're working to launch uh, together soon, as well as enhancements to key VMware services like Tanzu and continuing to expand the vRealize portfolio capabilities that we announced uh, earlier. It is so exciting to see our teams working hard uh, together to turn this roadmap into a reality, Mark. Uh, I just thank you so much for joining. I know customers are going to be excited to see more direct integration, the availability, and get their hands on the latest updates earlier. Yeah, thanks, Aaron, for having me on uh, the debut episode here. I love how together we're really seeing a shift in the conversation around IT, and IT is really a business enabler, helping drive the business forward. And as a result, we're creating new opportunities for our businesses, for our people. And it's really motivating for all of us at, at VMware and working closely with you to support these goals and partner with you uh, to really power that joint innovation on behalf of our customers together. I, I couldn't agree more. Thanks so much, Mark, for joining us. Thanks, Aaron. VMware and SAP are some of the most popular technologies in enterprise IT today. With VMware, many of your first instances of virtualization were with NSX, and SAP has been powering your mission-critical ERP and financial systems for decades. I hope you enjoyed the interviews with Julia and Mark. By bringing our teams together, we aspire to make your day-to-day -day lives easier. In our last few minutes together, I want to talk about some of the strategies top IT leaders are looking to adopt in the year ahead. Over the last year or so, we've witnessed accelerated waves of digital transformation across every industry that will persist well after the pandemic subsides. I speak with customers almost every day, and our conversations over the last year have been very different. Yet, there was a universal element amidst all of it, and that was the cloud. We talked about pivoting business models entirely, about transitioning to and supporting completely new ways of working, and about communicating with customers in completely new ways. As we all take a step back, there are four areas you can focus your investments for the most impact, both in the short and the long term. First, consider how you can prioritize your investments and talents towards new growth initiatives. Our learnings from the pandemic compel us all to focus on how to better prepare for the future. Investments then can create agility and flexibility to deal with the unknowns. You can be more agile by focusing on your core competencies, the things your company does best, and phase out what's become inefficient. This helps with two areas, reducing costs and creating room to innovate for the future. Now, this could be something as simple as adopting Azure File Sync, so tiered files can be recalled faster, which in turn cuts down costs. Or leveraging Azure Spot VMs, where you can access unused Azure compute capacity at a discount. And to innovate for the future, you can migrate the applications that are worth moving to the cloud and modernize around the legacy systems that are kept on-prem. Second, technical debt can be one of your biggest risks to your digital transformation strategy. Technical debt hampers your company's ability to compete and innovate, either with outdated systems or suboptimal implementations from decisions made in the past that haven't yet been addressed. If you're spending half of your IT budget on integrations and fixing legacy systems, it comes at an opportunity cost. Things like infrastructure as code can help you easily create, migrate, or back up your infrastructure with version control and reduce deployment scripts that accrue over time. And cloud modernization can help address or reduce technical debt issues, which in turn can fuel innovation, agility, developer velocity, and cost optimization. The third area is the critical need for companies to transform your business operations to ensure efficiency and digital resiliency. You can remove your tech silos by standardizing your platform for IT. Perhaps you have a data center team and a cloud team. You can break down those walls by sharing the same skills, tools, and best practices across your cloud and on-premises operations on a single platform. Now the data center team is happy because your compliance and availability standards are met, and the cloud team is happy because they can be more agile. Hybrid cloud solutions can help you reuse, manage, and govern your assets consistently across different environments. And Azure Arc enables you to decide where you want to run your services with a cloud-based control plane that runs on-premises at the edge or even in other clouds. Lastly, it is crucial to recognize the importance of investing in the expansion and training of your skills in IT. We want you to be the expert. That's why we're offering training programs and free online courses so you are the most critical part of your organization. 
If you don't know about this learning resource, you're going to want to take a look at Microsoft Learn. We've added 100 plus learning modules specifically for Azure infrastructure and IT professionals over the past 12 months. And we've compiled an entire suite of Microsoft certifications. If you're new to IT, you can start learning to prepare yourself to the forecasted 150 million new tech jobs to be created in the next five years. And if you're experienced, 91% of certified IT professionals say certifications gave them more professional credibility and 35% saw a salary increase. That's awesome, right? We're humbled to be able to support your professionals and personal growth with these globally recognized certifications. Now, if Microsoft Learn is the place for you to go to skill up yourself, we can also help your organization migrate and modernize with confidence. We are here to help you every step of the way, right from planning your move to making it happen. Get the right mix of expert help to move your applications, data, and infrastructure with the Azure Migration and Modernization Program, or AMP. AMP helps you reduce risk, offset transition costs, and skills up your organization while ensuring a successful move. These four strategies of prioritize your investments, reduce technical debt, remodel operations, and invest in skilling are key to gaining the resiliency and innovation needed to accelerate your business today and help you reimagine it for tomorrow. And that's a wrap on Inside Azure for IT. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you took away some new ideas for you to implement on the job. To continue to hear from industry experts, check out azure.com slash inside Azure for IT. And be sure to sign up for our new live Q&A on Microsoft Learn TV. Every two weeks, we'll be holding a live Q&A on Learn TV to answer your questions with our product experts. See you next time.